This year, many of us are spending more time indoors than ever before, focused on our gadgets, for work, and for entertainment. If we get the chance, though, we can step outside and look at nature on our doorstep. Flocks of birds in the sky, bees bumbling from one flower to another, ants creeping beneath our feet, mapping out the world from their lowly point of view. Collectors of animals like this, flocks of birds, schools of fish, colonies of insects, they're wonderful things to watch to becalm our busy minds. They're also a wonderful source of instruction about how to get teams working together effectively. I'm Dr. Edmund Hunt, and I have a particular soft spot for social insects like ants, or what we might call the superorganism. They work together so closely, it's like the colony is a single living organism. The thing I find especially interesting is how, even though ants often look exactly the same, is that their behavior is not identical. And in fact, individual differences in their behavior can be key to the group's emergent capabilities. And this is a focus for my research, functional heterogeneity. Now, heterogeneity just means the differences among the parts of the system, the ant workers, and functional because it actually makes an important impact on how the colony functions. It's not just differences that happen to be incidental. Let me give you an example of this functional heterogeneity in action. One thing animal groups need to do is allocate jobs. So imagine you're living with some flatmates and there are various bits of housework to do. And let's say that you're a very clean person. You're very hygienic and you have a very low threshold for any kind of dirt. Well, your flatmates, let's suppose that they have a more relaxed attitude. So when the dishes start to pile up in the sink, who is it that comes forward to do the washing up? Yes, it's you, because invariably the sight of that mess triggers your cleaning behavior before the others who end up doing other jobs. Perhaps they're just taking it easy, conserving energy in case something important comes along, a big job like heading out to the supermarket, maybe. In this case, you can see that starting with different behavioral thresholds ends up naturally allocating individuals to different jobs. These work roles can be reinforced over time, so that in this case, you'd become an expert cleaner. Functional heterogeneity at work. Where does such heterogeneity originate? As is so often the case, it's got to be a, a mixture of nature and nurture, a combination of genetics and real world experience. Evolution will adapt the distribution of thresholds within a tight knit group to make it effective in a, its typical environment. But this variation in behavior must also have some degree of flexibility to ensure that the group thrives in an uncertain, changing world. Now, biologists are actively researching all of this, but what can it teach us about engineering? I want to make teams of robots that work together, and I want to tap into the power of diversity within the team to get the job done well. Imagine deploying a swarm of drones in the sky, following a natural disaster like an earthquake. Their mission is to assist search and rescue. They need to spread out and detect points of interest for further investigation. Imagine that they each have an activation threshold, such that a minor blip on the sensors might distract one robot, while another robot with a higher threshold would keep on exploring. With a large group of such robots, having a spread of thresholds could help them manage the trade-offs of needing to spread out over the search area versus investigating in detail any possible signs of life. Another difference in behavior could be for each drone's activity level. Some might be slow and steady, staying close to the base to avoid running out their power level. Others might be much more active and take long trips into the distance. Again, variation like this could help to solve the challenge of wanting to gather as much information as possible 
but without putting too many robots at risk of getting lost. And just as in biological groups, such robot teams will need to show a suitable degree of behavioural flexibility. In the future, we'll see groups of robots working in all kinds of areas. Agriculture, logistics, monitoring the environment for pollution, and they'll need to allocate jobs, make decisions, and generally just figure out the best way of being helpful to their human users. In my view, this idea of functional heterogeneity will be really important in realising that vision. It also makes me reflect on how we put our own teams together, at work, at school, in our friendship groups. Often, we find that differences can lead to friction, but also to creativity and new capabilities. So if you have a chance, step outside and see some of nature's animal teams busy at work. Consider their hidden diversity and consider what it can teach us about making successful teams, whether that's humans or the robots of the future.